Hello, I'm Jackson Maberry, maker of violins, violas, cellos, and butt fiddles. You're going to have to ask Jerry Lynn about that one. Uh, I am also the maker of JG Macintosh uh, Rosinate Oil Varnishes, um, and I have been asked to demonstrate the chemical and physical resistivity of these finishes. So what you see before you is a selection of solvents, essentially, uh, and three test plates uh, that have been varnished with various formulations of, uh, of my work that I have developed over the years. Um, so, let's begin, shall we? So, the first thing that I was asked was, is it resistant to water? And of course, any good oil varnish should be resistant to water, because humans that play violins are made out of water. So, let's start with this little number, which uh, has six, no, five coats of my current formulation of J.G. Macintosh iron rosinate oil varnish. So I've got some water on a little rag here. I'm going to rub it around and then we're going to look at the cloth to see if it picked up any color. As you can see, there is none. Next, uh, solvent requires no introduction. Again, even the caustic spit of a luthier can't touch it. This next solvent is something that players exude in great quantities, although it's a synthetic version of perspiration, which is a combination of water, acetic acid, lactic acid, and salts. And again, no result. So next, we're going to go to my favorite solvent for diluting varnish uh, and, you know, for general cleanup, limonene, also known as dipentine in its uh, racemic mixture. And it smells really good. It's uh, less harmful for you than turpentine and other such things. And I actually apply my varnish with some of it in there, so you might think that there might be a reaction here. And yet, once again, nothing. Another common solvent that you will find in violin shops and anywhere varnish is used is mineral spirits. Let's see how that does. Once again, nothing. Now, we're going to move on to lab grade, nearly anhydrous isopropyl alcohol. Now, alcohol is something that will probably affect this varnish because oil varnishes tend to be susceptible no matter what kind of oil varnishes. So, let's give it a go. Hmm, interesting. Nothing. We'll try a relatively strong base, household ammonia. I use bases of various kinds to clean up my pans when I make varnish, so you'd think this might do a little something. Yes, it has, as you can see. So a base will attack this varnish if it is in sufficient strength. Oh lord, that smells awful. But as you can see, it didn't take much. Just a little lightening there. Last but not least, my favorite stripper, especially because it's a uh, gel and it stays put, citrus strip. Now this, I can guarantee you, is going to remove some varnish because that's what it's for. As you can see, a little color on the cloth there. If I were to let it sit for a while, it would really start pulling up varnish. But 
There's no need for that. We've already demonstrated that it will indeed attack J.G. McIntosh rosinate oil varnish. So the other thing people have asked me about, and people are generally curious about, is the physical resistance of a given varnish. Some varnishes are more friable or chippy than others. Uh, my current formulation is not very friable, and that is due in part to the nature of rosinate, but also in part due to the fact that I use a slightly higher proportion of oil than many people. People often claim that one-to-one -one by mass of oil to resin is like, you know, the golden standard, but really it's not. Um, I use three oil to two resin, and it produces a significantly more durable finish. So striking with the edge, as you might expect, is producing chips here, but heavy impact, which would shatter more friable varnishes, has no effect. In any case, I hope this has been interesting, uh, and uh, I appreciate your taking the time to watch it. Have a good one.